7.45 in the morning. It's Indiana in the morning on WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com. And good morning to you. In the studio with us this morning, Jonathan Bogert from the Historical and Genealogical Society of Indiana County. Sheriff Bob Fiock is here this morning. Wesley Wirtz as well. As uh, coming up is a very important program uh, for the uh, Historical and Genealogical Society, and I understand, Jonathan, that we might have Christina, uh, Christine Lenigro on the Lenigro, line with us. Yes. Okay. If she calls in, uh, we'll talk to her because she's a part of the ceremony coming up as well. Our conversation today brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the Best of Indiana County Contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. And what are we talking about? We're talking about the annual Vietnam Veterans Day program at the Historical and Genealogical Society. Jonathan, good morning. This is uh, a program that has uh, become not only very popular, but uh, very well received. Yes, thanks for having us this morning, Todd. Um, Again, yes, it's going to be the fourth annual uh, Vietnam Veterans uh, Day program. So it's uh, over the years have has grown in popularity. Um, It's a nice time to kind of reflect and honor those who served during that era. And we're looking to do it again a fourth time this year. So it's great to have a lot of the same people back and to honor those folks again. And that's going to be Friday, uh, March 22nd. Mm -hmm. Doors open at 530. The program itself starts at 6 p.m. So we have a program planned for the evening, a couple of speakers, pinning ceremony. And um, we're really looking forward to that event. Our our folks have been very hard at work, um, working with a couple of organizations to get that all to come together. Yeah. Yeah, Wesley Wirtz, good morning to you. Good morning. It's good to have you back in the studio with us today. It It is a, a, a very, very um, much needed, I guess, is, is the way that I would phrase it, program uh, for recognizing Vietnam veterans. Yes, because uh, while there was over 9 million veterans that served in our country during that era, and Sheriff, I will elaborate a little bit more on the dates and the era of time and how it all came about, but it is important to recognize them uh, still while it's the 50th commemoration period which ends next year. Mm -hmm. So we sent these out, and we have flyers out. We invited all our Vietnam veterans, previous veterans, for the pinning ceremony itself. We already have, I would say, at least upper 30s for the pinning ceremony itself. Uh And we're still asking people that if you're a Vietnam veteran and you would like to receive a lapel pin, please RSVP by the 15th of March, and you can contact the Historical Society at 724-463-9600. Or you can email at info, I'm sorry, info at hgsic.org. Mm-hmm. Now, this is for folks who have not previously received a pin? That There's no requirement on how many pins you can receive. Okay. All right. So uh, if you've received a pin before, you're certainly invited to participate again. By all means, yes. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Now, Sheriff Fiok, of course, he's a Vietnam veteran. Come forward, if you would. A little bit closer to the microphone. Uh, this is uh, morning. It, it's a program that's being conducted here, but uh, it's it, similar programs have been taking place for years. It's good that it's here, though, isn't it? There's been approximately over eighteen thousand over the time period to honor the Vietnam veterans. Yeah, and uh, the Vietnam veterans are uh, only the combat veterans that come home to be verbally abused, degraded, assaulted everything else but the recognition is finally coming around to honor these veterans mm-hmm. uh, we do have uh, a proclamation here that was issued by our commander-in-chief on the uh, 2017 which states and I'd just like to quote this thought if I sure. could um, to ensure the sacrifices of the nine million which Wesley was talking about um, that I signed into law the Vietnam War Veterans Recognition Act of 2017, designated March 29th of each year as National Vietnam War Veterans Day. Throughout the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War and every March 29th thereafter, we will honor all those who answered our nation's call to duty. Um, We also vow to never again confuse personal disapproval of the war with prejudice against those who honorably or the uniform of our armed forces. With conviction, our nation pledges our enduring respect and continuing care to our everlasting commitment to all Vietnam veterans, unquote. Yeah, yeah. Signed by President uh, Donald Trump? Yes, it was. 
Uh, and that's from 2017, and the program has carried forward and continues yes, here. Yes. Uh, when you have attended uh, in the past at the Historical and Genealogical Society, I, I know that it's meant a lot to you, oh, yes. uh, but you've seen how much it means to your fellow vets as well. It, it does because uh, a lot of them were just never recognized, or like I said, uh, some friends of mine that were Vietnam vets were actually beat up when they come home. Yeah, and I had to go through a ordeal in Pittsburgh Airport by a little girl that was maybe third or fourth grade, and I'll never forget that. <laughs> sure, but uh, it's just one of the things. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to uh, give the reasons why March the twenty ninth was uh, picked for this. Mm-hmm. Uh, the twenty ninth of March was the day the U.S. Military Assistance Command in Vietnam was disestablished. And also the 29th was the last day that the combat troops departed Vietnam. And finally, on March the 29th was the day that uh, Hanoi released the last of its acknowledged prisoners that we are aware of. Yeah. And for those three years, for those three main reasons right there is why the uh, 29th was picked as the choice of the National Vietnam War Veterans Day. Yeah, yeah. So it's... Uh, Something has been long overdue, but uh, I can assure you that all Vietnam veterans appreciate that. The 29th of March is the uh, date on which uh, Vietnam veterans are honored across the nation. The 22nd is the program at the Historical and Genealogical Society, Jonathan. And uh, uh, veterans uh, of the Vietnam War certainly will be honored and saluted. Their families as well, though, can be a part of this as too. Yes, absolutely. Uh, If the uh, veteran is deceased, I believe their spouse can... Uh, accept the pin on their behalf as well. So if you uh, are the spouse of a Vietnam veteran and they are deceased, reach out to us. Um, we do have, we can get you on the list and we can uh, make you a part of this as well. Yeah. Wes, you come across folks every day in uh, your walk of life. Uh, and uh, those folks are uh, people who have served our country honorably and, um, and are well do the respect. Their families are as well, though, aren't they? That is correct. Uh, one thing I'd like to attach on to the families and just the veterans themselves is it doesn't have to be a, one of the veterans that served in country. This is an era, regardless of location, anyone that served honorably from November 1st, 1955 to May 15th, 1975. Mm-hmm. So whether you were in Puerto Rico, the Philippines, or Vietnam itself, you are welcome and we honor you at this program. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that is coming up again on the 22nd. Jonathan, do people need to call ahead? Um, uh, Wes so, mentioned that some have already. So, yes, yeah, and this is open to the veterans, their families, as well as the public. Um, just we had a couple people call and ask about that. But Friday, mm-hmm. March 22nd, doors open at 530. Program itself starts at 6 p.m. And um, they can call ahead RSVP through our website or call. So you're looking at 724 463 96 Zero zero. If you want to use the phone, mm-hmm. or you can uh, use our website or email us, um, and that's www.hgsic.org. Do they need to be able to provide specific pieces of information? Uh, typically, I believe we have a couple of categories, Wes, that we're asking for: um, a, a time period that they served, branch, and rank Correct. as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we're collecting all that information and getting it to Christina, who will be taking care of um, participating in the pinning ceremony that evening. Mm -hmm. Um, But we also want to mention also that um, we've partnered with Greystone Presbyterian. They're providing parking for their lot that night. Um, We've seen over 100 people at past events. So um, parking is an issue sometimes in the borough. So Greystone is providing uh, parking, and that's just up the street. And then Hilltop Baptist is providing a shuttle for the evening. So oh, okay. we'll be able to take folks back and forth. We'll be able to park in the Greystone lot and uh, receive the shuttle back and forth. Um, we know some folks have mobility issues. It can be a lot to walk. So Greystone's a lot for parking, and um, there will be a shuttle. Yeah. Okay. Sheriff Bob Fayok, I want to ask you a question about, uh, as a Vietnam veteran, uh, dealing with uh, and, and being able to interact with uh, vets of other eras. Um, uh, vets of the Persian Gulf War era, vets of uh, the current or people who are currently serving in the military. Um, uh, Unfortunately, uh, so many of the Korean War and World War II veterans, there are very few of those 
a uh, gentleman left, uh, ladies and gentlemen left, uh, and uh, we lament their loss. But certainly you have the opportunity to deal with more recent vets and, and active military. Uh, and I'm interested in their reaction to somebody who served in Vietnam. What's it like now? Uh, because of the Vietnam vets, what we have as one of our legacies, Todd, that the Iraq, Afghanistan, even some of the past war that are still living, mm -hmm. did not really get that much respect when they come home. But now because of what the Vietnam veterans have been pushing for, they are getting recognized, they're being honored, and thanked for their duty to the United States of America. Yeah. But we are, we're reaching out. Uh, there are times that we try to go, and even uh, right now we have a lot of homeless vets, but we're still trying to make contact with those and try to assist them. We do have the parsonage set up, which has helped tremendously. And uh, other people are trying to do what we can to make sure that these people receive the proper treatment and medical assistance or whatever they might need. So it's it's something we have to continue to do. Absolutely. And, and you do get to uh, talk with uh, uh, current vets, uh, uh, vets of, uh, of a more recent vintage. And and active military, and share your experiences with them, too, I would assume. Yes, yes. And uh, like I said, it's uh, sometimes they still are coming home, and they, uh, they don't know how to respond to certain people. And uh, uh, PTSD, uh, we still have a lot of uh, suicides, and we try to be intervening as much as we can to help these veterans. Yeah, absolutely. Programs such as this can be a help. All right, gentlemen, again, the program is coming up on uh, March the 22nd. That's a couple of Fridays away from now. Jonathan, people just need to contact you, let you know they're coming, and uh, and you'll be happy to have them. Yep, absolutely. Again, 724-463-9600 or our website, hgsic.org, Friday, March 22nd, uh, 6 o'clock. Thank you, Ben. We okay. appreciate it. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 .1 FM, AM 1160.